Hello and welcome to Under the Hood with Zim. I'm Dr. Abstract. Let's go in and take a look at the Zim site now at zimjazz.com. Oh, and we've just launched a new version, which is fun. So you can press up top here and see Zim01. We'll probably, we've got, we've got all these toggling through to the next versions up here, but we'll probably make now a menu page. We've got new down buttons on Zim. Uh, one of the things that we've, though, that we've changed is a whole new frame. So let's go in and take a look at the template on how we can load things now and talk about it. And that's, that's what we'd like to do for under the hood. And then there's other examples of new things in here as well. Then we drop back to the Zim 00, zero uh, and those examples. Okay, so reducing this, F11. Uh, although we can come back to Zim and take a look at the code right here. So why don't we pop that open? Well, you know what? I'll copy it into a page. So I'm going to copy the new template right here. So we're in the code page, copying the template. And we'll come back in and create a new file here. Well, where should I put that? Probably, did I put something, what are we called, under the hood? No, I don't think I made a hood directory. So I'll just start a new file here. Well, I gotta save it somewhere. So usually, uh, let's see, where shall we work? H, do I have a hood? No, maybe I should make a hood directory in that way. Any code, new folder, hood. Will I find it? it didn't take me there. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, F, X, hash, hood. There, it, uh, there it is and a new file and we will call this one template.html there we go and paste so here's the new template code right here we're using the modules as before where we're importing from zim01 so this is zim version zim01 and now we have fit dimensions, the colors, and a ready callback. So in the past, that used to be the assets, the path, uh, optional path for the assets, and an optional preload uh, for the path, which could be a waiter and then other, like maybe a dozen other parameters. So this is how it was, and what we've um, decided to do is a couple other frameworks out there use a callback just to make it easier, or they, they've just started with, hey, uh, we're going to just do update, and we're just going to do red, not ready, I can't remember what are they, like draw, I think it was update, draw, those are the ticker-based things. Anyway, these frameworks I'm talking about are things like P5.js, which just, uh, you, you get two functions and you have to know to put your code in those functions. Then there's uh, other, other ones, Pixie and Phaser, for instance, and they have a, an object literal that you pass into setting up your game or your scene or whatever it is, I can't remember. And those object literals um, have callback functions in them, much like we're doing here. We can use object literals too because of the Zim Duo technique. You can say new frame like that and then put these into, uh, for instance, if we didn't have the fit mode, then we might have the full mode. That's the default. So the only thing I would have to put in here is ready like that. As a matter of fact, because it's ES6, that's all I would have to put in, which means I may as well not even drop it off, drop down to other lines. So frame dot. Basically, this is saying uh, when it's ready, call the ready function. Uh, but with ES6, if these two things are the same, then you don't need to put both of them. So that would work in a full mode. You want to see it? And we'll open a browser plus. There it is in full mode. So we, we've got no color. There's no scaling because it's full mode. So you'd have to scale it yourself. Or, or sorry, not scale, but resize. You know, um, move around and stuff like that it's just it's just there so that is i suppose as simple as you can get well uh, not really you can if you want put a put a, an object literal right in here drop it down take all this stuff copy 
put it in there, get rid of the ready completely. So there you go. You've got, you know, it's not bad, but you got a couple brackets at the end and that can look confusing for people. So that also uh, should work. Didn't though, wait a minute. I'm getting an error. Blah, blah, blah. For, oh, uh, I've got to put that in a ready, right? A ready colon. There you go. Okay, so that's pretty good. And remember, we'd have to pass in other things to the frame, so we can't just have it call the object or, or call the the arrow function only. We have to say uh, what property is going to call it. All right, so that was that's with the uh, full mode. If we want to go to other modes, though, then we can say scaling colon fit, for instance, uh, width colon 1024, height colon uh, 786. And then we're back to our, oh, should have been the scaling fit. Uh, I saved it. That's not a fit. Oh, it is a fit mode. Oh, I have no background color. <laughs> Interesting. So uh, yeah, there it is. Um, if we have some colors, uh, color colon red, that then we'll definitely see that this is a fit mode. And there it is. Okay, so now that's fitting in there. And at that point, we might want an outer color as well. We'd probably drop these things down, like so. And why don't we go back to the ready function? function ready here we go with a round bracket there and tabbing in okay so now we've got a nice easy way to read things that we're doing we can do other parameters if we want as well um, oh what have we got broken this time color red frame there it is function Unexpected token squiggly bracket somewhere. Do you see it? Function. Oh. Okay. That should do it. Oh, I can do JavaScript. And what are we missing now? <laughs> Function ready uh, goes from that squ squiggly bracket to that one. Oh, okay. Go away. There we go. Yay. Like I said, I can JavaScript. And we might want an outer color here. I, I don't really want a red, a red color. I'll put dark on the outer. Well, how about uh, an outer color, sorry, of um, darker, maybe? And dark with a comma. Let's swap these, comma. Oh, how's my coding today? It's, uh, are you guys going, no, 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 put the comma in there. Ah, got to put the comma. All right, so there we go. Uh, there'd be no real reason in laying these things out uh, because this is actually the order of the parameters. We may as well just go back to how we had it in the template <laughs> and run it with only the parameter values in there, the arguments. But other frameworks such as uh, Phaser and Pixie, I don't know. I don't think they've got the Zim Duo technique as far as I know. So I think if, if they have to set up stuff, they end up looking like this. So. Uh, I'm just saying that we can look like that too, if we so desire, but may as well go this route right here. Oh yeah, uh, except we have decided to put the ready callback right in front of the assets. So that's this. Um, I can't remember, was I showing you what we're trying to avoid? Uh, the old the old way of doing it is we would store this in a frame. We would go const frame is equal to, and then we would say frame dot on ready. And we can still do this. And in here we could say ready. There we go. Or we could take the what we usually did there was put the arrow function right in there. So this way still works. Well, 
um, except we still we would need null here for the ready call. So we used to ha not have the null there. We'd run the assets here, and when we're ready, oh uh, yeah, call the ready function, and then in here we'd have the assets. But because we were starting off, this, so that looks fine. I mean, for the beginner who first comes here, it's like this is basic JavaScript, except of course JavaScript would have add event listener here, which also works if we wanted to, but nobody really wants to type add event listener, so we reduce that to on. So I think this is still fairly readable. When the frame, frame on ready, when it's on ready, when it's ready, call the ready event uh, or function. Okay, so quite readable, but when we're short forming it to the to these guys, to the arrow function, this starts looking a little bit difficult for people. So for kids, for beginners, it's just a little, you see what I mean? It's a little bit complex looking. Now it is getting them ready because we've got a, an event system in JavaScript. It's, you know, we're gonna use events over and over again. Um, you know, not necessarily, but probably. However, Zim has change events or change the change chainable change method for handling uh, events on components. And it's also got a tap event for handling clicking or a tap uh, method. So the on method, I mean, you could probably build half of the stuff, if not more in Zim without even using the traditional JavaScript on method. We also have wire and wired. Um, so Zim is kind of heading towards an, maybe an easier format than the add event listener well, or the on method. However, you know, we're, we're still JavaScript and that's some, one thing that we kind of pride ourselves on in Zim is that we are JavaScript. So, it's kind of like expected that you're going to have to know this technique here. However, like I said, for kids that first come in, that's a little bit gnarly looking for them. And whenever I describe this, even not for kids, for, for college people, I usually say, okay, let's, let's worry about what's in here first, and we'll come back to what this means later. <laughs> we'll, co we'll come back to that later. You know, I read them through it, and it kind of makes sense, but don't worry about the format of all this stuff. We'll come back to it later. Well, now if we undo this, uh, assuming that we have no assets and preload and, and, and that stuff, we've got a ready right here. We're now looking at this format, which is we put the word ready here and then we have a function ready. Uh, I think this is a little bit simpler. All right, functions also are very common in JavaScript uh, that we make a function. Uh, any Anybody who comes from older JavaScript is definitely used to making functions. We've been making functions since the 90s. And, and there it is, you know, just a function ready. And it's a nice, oh, we don't even need the frame anymore. So that's another thing that we've done that is worth talking about here. Um, we get rid of that and if we want to access the frame we're given F for frame. So that stands for the default frame. I would say like 95% of the things made in Zim are just in one frame anyway. There are occasions where you do want multiple frames for uh, now, the advantage of having multiple frames is you can almost imagine it as redraw regions. It's sort of like if the one frame handles stuff that's updating all the time and the other frame handles your interface, which isn't really updating all the time, that that will be optimal for your performance because the, the components aren't being redrawn all the time, but the stuff that's being redrawn all the time is in a different frame. Um, so that might you know, it might be good for everything you make with components, but most of the time you don't have to worry about performance. Zim performs just fine on, you know, most most apps that are made without splitting up your frames like that. So that's only in a absolute um, optimization situation. So in other words, 
f is the default frame. And if you had more frames in this format, you would do something like this. New uh, const frame two, we'll put it as equal to a new frame. We would call ready to, ready to. F would still stand for this frame up here. S would still stand for this stage up here, etc. But within here, your ready receives um, the frame. So this is if, uh, actually, I guess, you can either use frame two if you ever need to reference a frame, like to get the, the mouse movements or something. You could say frame two dot on and run uh, a keyboard event or something like that. Or if you need the mouses there, frame two dot mouse x. Although really, since they're, they might not be in the same position. The frames can be in different positions. So I think, yeah, you'd want to ask for frame two's mouse x there, frame two dot on. Uh, but you don't really need to do the frame two. You could capture a new frame in here, say call it frame, in which case it'd be frame here and frame here. All right, you still have F referring to the previous frame. Same with stages. So the next thing here is the stage. So this is stage. So now this uh, function right here has frame and stage and you can capture width and height as well. And you know everything about this frame right in here, yet you still got these globals if you want them. Okay, so there's no problem in handling multiple frames there. Uh, another possible issue is it starts to look a little bit weird, like uh, f dot um, mouse x. And this would be f dot on. Like so. So say stage mouse down. I'm going to need to put quotes around that. So frame dot on stage mouse down comma call this arrow function and we will say our circle right here const c is equal to c dot remove from. Um, by the way, this is an under the hood. We haven't quite gone under the hood yet. Hopefully, you're still with us and in enjoying the discussion anyway. Um, we will go under the hood to see what this cost us, to see what putting a callback in there, you know, what that means to ZimFrame. Um, we'll do that after we discuss more about it here. So we're going to remove from. We should see that not remove. So let's have a look. I hit the stage and I didn't see it remove. We should see it remove if I change this. <laughs> I didn't. So perhaps something... Uh, Messed up. Are we getting an error? No error. Um, frame dot on. Oh, it's because it's not the frame. It's the stage. So here's we're using the S now. It's stage dot on stage mouse. Now. OK, so let's try that. We should see it not disappear. And we don't. But now we should see it disappear here. And there she goes. OK, so. Um, if we wanted to get the mouse x, we would approach it that way. So using these constants, uh, oh, the reason why we, we didn't see that remove is because we didn't do a stage.update. So there we go. In the past, we often stored, we said something like um, const stage is equal to frame.stage. You can still do that if you want. And then we could use the word stage here and stage there. All right, so now you can see that we we, we see what these things are. I don't know if we wanted to complete that. We would go circle or something like that, or circ, and then we would say circle there. So this is more readable in that we know what those things are. So you're still welcome to do that. Another way to do it is collect the frame here, collect the stage here, and not bother with that anymore. And that also works. Now you have the stage. So the ready, the ready that's being called here gets past the frame, the stage. Uh, in the past as well, our template was const stage is equal to frame dot stage. Const stage width is equal to frame dot width. And const height. Oh, sorry. 
page dot height is equal to frame dot height. Uh, for many years, I used stage width and stage height for I used those two variables the, throughout throughout my flash programming. That's what I used. Um, when I started teaching, though, this was a little bit more obtuse, and you know, uh, people take take getting used to. So I went out with the full stage with stage height and built that in, in a sense, to the old Zim template. So we were used to having this. I think we used lets here just in case we had moved to a full mode, in which case these values would be changing, and let is better than a const. Um, but anyway, that's how it was before. Now we can collect them here if we want, stage width, stage height. And we're back to, you know, we don't need that. So we're back to what we had in the template. So even this part, part if you ignore the fact that we've got these globals, this is probably nicer than putting out all that stuff that we had before. I mean, it's certainly less code. It's half as much code. But we built in frame, stage, uh, width, and height. And at that point, we went to single letters for each of them. I think that if I were teaching initially, I might avoid those and go with this route right here. And if we ever need stage width and stage height, bring it in. You don't always need stage width and stage height. So um, bring it in this way and you know use those here. But you don't need to. This can just be S, and let's have a look at this again. Oh, yes. Now when I press, it does the stage.update there. I am sure that we would quickly get used to that, and it would be quite convenient for us. Uh, right? Okay, so let's have a look at... Oh, we don't need an F dot mouse X there, but we could do that if we wanted. You know, or something like... Or the, the event that I was thinking of is a frame dot on key down. So when we press a key, call this arrow function, and we'll do the same thing in it. Well, we do circle dot ska twice three is big. Okay, ready? So now I'm gonna oh okay, don't press on it. <laughs> I think I have to press on it to get focus. Okay, that, that focuses it. Now I hit a key. Hey. Okay, so I just hit a key and that worked. But there's our frame dot on key down, stage dot on stage mouse down. And if we wanted to well um why don't we go to a full mode? There's a full mode like that and call ready like so. And when the frame is ready, we can use a frame dot on resize here. And it won't bother centering the circle. I won't bother dragging it. So we just made a circle. And if we want the circle to always stay in the center, we can then say circle.center here. The resize gets an automatic stage.update afterwards, so we don't have to worry about that. And then the frame on resize, circle center. So that's how the full mode would work. Nice, huh? So frame, when we're ready, it'll call that. We're centering the circle, but check this out. If we wanted to say pose the circle or loc the circle, well, let's loc the circle, I guess, at the width of it, the stage width times 0.2, that's 20%, and the height of it um, times 0.2, that's 20% the height, then you get this. I'm not changing the height, but you get the idea. So that's 20% the stage width. And see, isn't that nice width and height? Nice, simple code. Frame, dot on resize, locate circle, width and height. 
you know, not bad, huh? Is it readable? So on uh, zimjs.com slash slack, zim, I have a hotkey for zimjs.com slash slack. If you go there, there is a number sign technical that you can join that group or ask me to, to uh, add you to that. I can't remember if you can just find it and join it. I think you can. Anyway, that's the technical channel on Slack. And we posed the question about what do you think of this new um, template here? And I'm hoping that some of you can talk us through. It's not too late. We just launched this yesterday. It's not too late to maybe reverse the template concept, you know, default template concept. Uh, for instance, the default co template, template concept could say frame stage here. Now, maybe don't even mention these. I'm not sure. You know, if, if you think that this is really harming uh, what people will be making, is that going to harm the framework by having these single character letters here. I don't know. And is the callback going to harm the framework rather than using the traditional on? Like why not just stay with JavaScript events? Why why go callbacks? You know, do, do we want to do that? Um, people who are sort of more developer wise are probably going, well, why isn't it a promise? Or, um, well, you know, whatever those things are. <laughs> Oh, wait. I was like, uh, uh, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> not needed. Um, so this is, let's see what it's doing in the background. You know, you might be saying, well, the callback's not, not a proper event model. You know, well, I think you're going to see <laughs> it actually is. So I'm going into the docs here, and we've jumped down to the, the frame, which is down here. Ooh, nice numbers, huh? Seven, one, 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 one. And let's have a look and see what's in here. I'm gonna close this guy down. So here's our check dispatch, which is being it sort of calls it to make sure that there is a stage by checking the that the stage has a width and height. Um, and it's doing that through little little timeouts. And check dispatch is going to be run when it's ready, basically. There's progress. We've we're okay, so here's us setting the globals. If there's not already a global stage, then set the global stage to stage. Um, just thinking now we have these are actual globals, whether you have ZNS true or false. Um, ZNS stands for Zim namespace, and usually we do that to avoid cluttering or polluting the the global namespace, so that we're not overwriting other overwriting other people's globals. Well, we've just overwritten their globals, regardless of whether the namespace is there. Probably we should turn these on only if and if there's if they want the namespace, it should be like Zim.s. But you know, nobody's going to use Zim.s instead of stage. I mean, like, pretty ridiculous. You know what I mean? In, in our code everywhere, zim.sos.update. <laughs> and uh, at, that, at that point, you know, you may as well just store the stage from the callback and, and go stage.update. See what I mean? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, might have to look into that. I hope that... I mean, it is possible that other frameworks or libraries have a global of W and H capital letters. But if so, it's probably the width and the height anyway. <laughs> uh, but, I don't know, whatever. It's interesting. <laughs> Do you see what just happened to us? Probably is that. Maybe it's window, though. Because Zim was using a W for window. So W uh, was everywhere. Because we found that the window. So anytime we want to reference the JavaScript window, we had put the word window. Well, it was causing something like 2K's worth of code. We had window written so many times in Zim that it was 2K worth of code. So we even minified. So we kind of went, uh, all right, let's, um, 
uh, let's change the variable name. So we did that, change the variable, variable name to W. Then we come along, we need the W. <laughs> it's like, oh crap, you know. So we, we didn't know what to do. We've just um, called it WW for window. <laughs> w, W, there we go. <laughs> you know, whatever. Could have called it H window for HTML window or whatever, you know, so that that's now refers to our global window. So we just unfortunately added a, you know, a little bit to our size, but no big deal. So here's how we handled our stage, stage width, stage height. Where'd our frame go? Our frame must be somewhere else. I hope. <laughs> our default frame. Yeah, we got it somewhere. Uh, and then here is our check for the ready. If there is a ready available for us, and the type of ready is a function, then call ready. Pass it that. That's our frame. Because I'm in the frame mod, I'm in the frame class right now. So that refers to our frame. Here's the stage, stage width, and stage height. There is another callback that we added called ticker, and that's another sort of questionable issue in that um, darn. Uh, in that we separated, like we, we started this way, ready, comma, ticker. So in other frameworks, it's called draw or update. Update. Update is a good one. Um, we already got updates around. Update, maybe could have gone with an update name for it. Let me just think. There is a reason why we didn't. We didn't want it, we didn't want to confuse people thinking that that was like an automatic stage dot update. Uh, so we called it ticker because that's what Zim has used. We don't really think that this is going to be used all that much. So anyway, a couple, couple issues. Um, ready and ticker are callbacks. So why not put them together? Here's how we started. We started with asset here, assets path, and. I presume preload. They all go together well, you know. We don't want to split these three up. So we started putting the ready and the ticker afterwards because these have been around for a while. Many examples have this order right here. And it's just sort of like, not that I, we're not really worried about breaking past code because passcode works. Well, there's no reason to update to this Zim. So going ahead in the future, uh, we should be fine. So we're not really worried about it being backwards compatible or wrecking the, you know, the parameter order. Um, but there's a teaching issue as well. Okay, we've got, got lots of videos that are out there saying, "Hey, put the assets after the colors," and so all those teaching, all those teaching videos and tutorials and stuff like that have the wrong order. Um, we'll, you know, we'll adjust the tips. Tips is a place where we keep the modern Zim in mind, where we make sure that all that stuff gets updated and just, you know, watch out. So if we're going to have a tip on the frame and say, watch out, you know, we used to have the assets here and now we've got the ready. Anyway, so that was going through our head as well in, in this decision, as well as the fact that these two things go together. These are your callbacks and usually they would put be put one after the other. Well, the thing is, if we take both of them and put them here, then most uh, most of the time, light, dark, ready, ticker, asses, we don't have these things defined anywhere at the moment, but most of the time uh, we don't need a ticker. So we'd end up going null here and passing in whatever assets and path. So that's kind of ugly. And also if, if, we, if we left it how it was, Red. 
ready and ticker. If we left it like that, then if we didn't have assets, which is half the time at least, that's about half the time Zim doesn't have doesn't need assets, then we're left with that as the template. And it's sort of like, okay, that's not a nice template. Null, 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 and a ready. Well, actually, we wouldn't need the ticker, but that's not as nice a template for sure. So we want it that. But if we want assets, we don't want to go null, comma, assets, and then put our assets in there. Because that's, that's going to be a headache. So I, I would say 95% of the time, we're, we're like that. So we decided to split up ready and ticker. And the other reason we don't really worry about that so much, I mean, in something like P5.js, where their, their, their system is built on a ticker, that's why it's called processing. Um, it's just over and over and over and over and over again. And they make generative art, and that's what they do. Uh, they're not really making interactive media with buttons and sliders and stuff like that, which doesn't, up, you know, they our interactive media doesn't update all the time. It just stick, sits there where processing constantly processes. I mean, there's ways around that in processing, but still that's that's what it's made for and that's the idea. So fine. But with, with Zim, we just want that stuff. And when we drag, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna update. But otherwise we don't want this updating. We don't want it processing. So uh, if we want a ticker though, like if, if we need it, then we go ticker.add. There's lots of times that we've got ticker type stuff like animation. If you just have animate, that calls a ticker in behind. We don't have to add the ticker. If you're dragging, that cause, calls updates in behind. We don't have to add a ticker. But if we need a ticker for something else, then we can add an arrow function here. And that's our ticker. The benefit of adding it this way is that we're in the scope of our other stuff. So I can say something like circle dot um, x plus equals plus equals two. And now when we have a look at this, open a browser plus, we have made a boo-boo, we don't have any assets. There it goes. Okay, so you see we've got access to the circle because we're in the scope and that's what it took to add our ticker. All right, well, we could also do it this way. We don't have any assets. No, no, no ticker, like that. And put the ticker down here, function. And this is what um, other frameworks are doing, function ticker call there's update or draw. There it is. And then I would put my circle plus equals two in there. Like so. Get rid of it there and this won't work. It doesn't move. It's giving us an error probably. So the reason is the circle is being declared in the ready function. So basically we have to pull this out here and go let circle. So even though it's a constant, we're stuck with let because constant can't be declared like that. Then we have, we're making the circle here. Well, the ticker is gonna move it and we're back to working. Okay. Uh, so, you know, it's okay. 3JS is like this a lot of the time too, where they're, they're, they put their processing in a different function from their, their uh, whatever preload or you know, the beginning. And that means everything that you make has to be stuck up here so that you can access it down here. It's just not very fun or optimal. So I would rather not have to do that just to get to that ticker. So um, we're, we put it there so that we have parity. And once again, these nulls look a little bit clumsy. But the thing is, those other frameworks are used to the other root, and the other root would be like this. Get rid of the nulls. This is Zim Duo, so we can do that. 
Okay, assuming the full mode. Or if you know, how they would do it, maybe ready colon ready and ticker colon ticker Boop, like so. Okay, I think that sort of discusses all that uh, we wanted to sort of discuss here. We see that under the hood, it's not really doing it. You know, it doesn't take much to do it all. Oh, uh, we didn't really complete rats that broke that. Uh, we didn't really complete the ticker thing. Uh oh, what did I change here? And I can't see. Hopefully that's okay. I'll have to come back and look at it. Uh, Adam has given me a bug in closing that thing at the left. Uh, hopefully you're still with us. Hello. We love you. Uh, Zim docs. This is zero zero version and zero one Zim doc. I don't find um, Zim dot frame equals. So here's the frame. We've we've updated the templates within the frames as well to you know talk about these things. There you see your F stuff and well, the frame stuff. Fair bit in fair bit in the frame. Woo! I want to find. I don't find. Let's look up ready. That was in a dispatch. Why is there only one dispatch here? I'm in a gamepad. Sorry about that. I don't know. Load assets. Do you see it anywhere? Stop me if uh, if you see it. Frame is, I think it's after that. Oh no, make stage. Can't remember where it is in here. Make canvas. There it is. Okay, so. Um, there's the ready. What we didn't look at was the ticker right here. So if the ticker is a function that's available, then we've got zim ticker dot add. So then we're adding the function to the ticker. And that ticker call, it's a, a fun, anonymous function that's calling the tick, whatever that fu ticker function is and passing it an increasing count. So in that one, we get the count of the ticker first followed by the frame, the stage, the width, and the height. So it gets the same parameters. We did put that at the end, but then we realized with the globals, we don't even need these most of the time. And if we wanted the count, we'd have to go to null, 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 null count. And so we said, all right, well, let's put the count first then on that. We also add at that point a pause ticker that will toggle, it will either add or remove that ticker from the ticker queue. So this is nothing, basically. We already have a ticker going in a ticker queue. Basically, we're just calling, adding that function to the ticker queue. In this case, whenever it's ready, we just call the ready thing. That's what the change of template cost that, plus a pause. All right. Um, the other thing that we've done since, <laughs> we should have done this ages ago. I don't know why we didn't. We have, unfortunately, caused the, the whole world to do a stage.update in the template of Zim for the last eight years or whatever, they would have to do a stage to update to be able to see their stuff. Um, the reason we did that primarily was, in a sense, um, well, that's how CreateJS did it, but also it tells people that we're not doing any stage to updates unless you need, you know, you got to do them. It's sort of warning the people that. Uh, there's this thing called stage dot update. We're not going to drain the batteries. We're going to make you, whenever you change something, do a stage dot update. Um, well, 
Uh, so I think we can ease off on that a little bit. First of all, there's a lot of things that are already doing stage.updates, like, um, like animate drag already does that stuff for us. We're almost to the point now we've got it on our, on our list of future thoughts to consider of handling a stage update at the end of every event so that you don't so we're looking at that and sort of looking at performance. The issue is stage.update is by far the most draining of anything that we can do. It has to redraw everything on the stage. So it's way more draining than any conditionals or any anything like that. So um, even even we, we found on, it was older mobile devices, eight years ago mobile devices when we were looking at all this, even if you had just two or three stage dot updates at once, it would start to clog or bog things. And if you remove two of those three and just did one, it didn't. So uh, we had to be really careful that we weren't adding stage dot updates on top of one another. We even created Zim Optimize. It's called Optimize. It's Optimize True. Optimize dot uh, is equal to true. If you set that, that will mean that Zim doesn't do any stage dot updates except for animation. So it, it doesn't it doesn't even update the button on a slider. So as you as you drag a slider, that button will not if you don't update yourself, that button you won't see it move. You, you know, you'll try to move it, but you won't see it move because Zim will not do that stage dot update because the slider is updating. And if you, inside of your event function for the slider, the change event, put an update there, then you've got the slider updating and the change event update. That's two updates happening for no reason. You just really need one update. So in the future, we're taking a look at maybe what we can do is try and handle that a bit. So we're looking at the management of things, of resources, including the management of um, all the the managers, the, the layout class. So Zim Layout, Zim uh, Pages, and Zim Grid and Guide, they all can be added to a resize manager, it's called. So if the, if the page resizes, then um, we update the layouts, update the grids, update the pages. And with pages, it's just really for, uh, for the going from one page to another, we cache the page and we need to know the size to cache it. Anyway, we could just, whenever we make a grid, automatically add it to an update manager. And whenever we make a, a guide uh, or a layout, automatically add it to a manager. And then when we resize, automatically call the resize.update. It's very simple on the outside for you to do, but we're actually thinking, well, we could just bring that in and do it on the inside. Then you don't have to think about it. You just make a layout and it will update itself. You make pages, it'll update itself. Grids and guides will update themselves. So I think we were careful at the beginning to you know, not abstract a lot of this and to sort of make, make it apparent that we're careful with stage.updates. But we do see room potentially for Zim02 to bring some of those systems into automatic updating and almost eliminate the need for a stage update or you know, for people to think about stage updates. Now that happened in Flash and that was one of the reasons why Flash drained batteries is because it was constantly updating when you didn't need to. Well, we know that and we won't constantly update when you don't need to. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll still be careful. Um, but I think there, there's room for um, some easing there, some ease, easing of your burden with the stage dot updates. That is. All right. Well, why don't we call it a wrap then? Hopefully that was a fun behind the scenes, and hopefully I didn't do anything in here that uh, messed that up. Might almost be worth doing an undo through that. Okay, it just got me to there. I think I'm good. All right. Um, ciao. This has been an Under the Hood with Zim. Um, and I am Dr. Abstract. Please uh, come and join us. Zimjs.com slash Slack. Zimjs.com slash Discord. We would love to see you.